There's no time. Hey, it's us again, and it's episode 143, going back to the true crime like we do. Yeah, this is a request, wasn't it? Uh, these these actually, these are both requests, but yeah. I wanted to do them, I wanted to specifically do them on one show, just one because the first case isn't like super detailed because it happened a long time ago, but both of these cases also... I wrote about them in my books, like the first case I wrote about in the first Faceless Villain volume, and the second case I'm writing about it in this next one that's coming out, which is volume three. Yeah. Which, as I said, will be out hopefully at the end of the summer or early fall. Yeah, and if uh, if we sound different, we're having problems with the microphone again. 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 This so. is the new. This is the second Blue Yeti that we bought. Okay. Yeah. It's like we bought one. Never used again. off eBay. Yeah. And it worked fine for a while, but then it About started doing months. this weird thing. And like, I don't know if it's a Mac problem. I don't know, because I record this on a Mac. I got a feeling it's some kind of software problem. I took this that one apart and looked at it. I thought maybe there's a connection at the, in, the, in the jack with the wire. No. Like, and it still no. works, but for a while, like when you bought... So that one kind of went tits up, and we bought a brand new one, uh, allegedly. Yeah. And it worked fine until yesterday when yeah. all of a sudden it still works but all yeah. of a sudden the mac doesn't recognize it as a yeti anymore yeah and it forgets the settings that it like has. it just comes up as like a generic yeah. usb microphone instead of because you know it used to come up when you plugged it into the mac it right. used to come up and, and said yeti stereo microphone and that's what they're both that's what they're that. both doing and we researched it and it's got to be some kind of software conflict i mean it still works just you have to manually go in there and do the settings and we can't depend on that for the for the audiobook yeah so we went we got a professional system yeah. I got one of those, what are the AT2035s uh, with that damn, what do they call it? The, the thing that turns it into digital so you can put it in there. And I didn't get the preamp, but I might, you know, I think it's mostly just. Yeah, a, we went ahead and got pretty much like, yeah, like a, a, a sort of like basic professional system. Yeah, it's something I can trust. It's got the boom arm on it, and I can, yeah. I can work with it. I mean, not so much. Like I said, it's. You know, recording for the podcast, as long as it sounds, you know, decent, that's yeah. fine. But, like, when I do the audiobooks, um, I really want them to sound, you know, as good as possible. Yeah. So I didn't... It sucks because I'd already recorded, like, seven or eight chapters with this yeah. microphone. And now I'm going to have to do them all over again so yeah. they all sound consistent. So we got two Blue Yetis for sale if anybody wants them for a good price. I mean, you know, they're good. It's, you know, it's good for podcasting. It's just yeah, we, you like know. I said, they still work. It's it just work. that I didn't really trust them for, and they might right. work better on PC. I, it right. might just be a Mac issue. Yeah, I feel like maybe so I got, that's what I it got is. two of them. We have a wire for that one too, right? Uh, yeah. Somewhere. One of them's new in the box. The other one is with outside the box. You know, I'll give you a good deal on it. Yeah. So if yeah. anybody wants like a blue Yeti, microphone. yeah, you can just hit us up. Because how much are they new? New, they're 110. 110, something like that. Yeah, I think we probably paid. give that one for about 40. Yeah, I think there. we bought that used one on eBay for 50 or for 60 50? for yeah. a while back, and it lasted a few months, and then it started. Like I said, it still works. It's just the Mac doesn't recognize it, and I'm I'm getting like a yeah, weird and it kind of loses our settings. So when it comes to doing uh, audio books, you got to make sure that it's perfectly consistent, and I, I don't trust it. Don't yeah, trust that's it. what I said. So this we, one here, we got the box for it and everything. We'll probably let that go for about 80. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, so we bought I the bullet. I think it's a Mac issue too. Something it might be Mac. because I've seen that like a lot of people had problems. Like yeah. a lot of it wasn't like compatible with Macs and stuff. So it might just be the fact that I'm recording this on my, you know, on my yeah. uh, MacBook. That might be the problem too. Yeah. So we went ahead and bit the bullet and spent yeah, a lot of money and got, 200, 250 yeah, we bucks like for like 250 so. bucks on like. I think it was 250. No, kind it was of two, a, two, uh, 230. 230, yeah. Yeah, it was 230. Yeah. For, uh, yeah. So we went ahead and kind of got a. Semi-professional, yeah. like a basic professional setup. You'd be able to sing with that shit, too. Yeah, we've been thinking. i to do some karaoke. We've been thinking about doing some karaoke. Yeah, man. <laughs> yeah. I'm about to sing. I'm going to do, I want to do like some uh, some Danzig covers. Yeah, you totally some, should. And some Judas Priest covers. We'll Can you do, you should do some um, Roy Orbison also. I could do Roy Orbison, man. And Bowie. Yeah. Yeah, I'll do kind of gothic versions of them. Yeah, that'd be totally Yeah. Right. That would be, be, that'd be like, that's like your friends. Yeah, trip. That's like your friend's band. 
that does the uh, goth covers of like cheesy 80s songs. Yeah. Yeah. Death in Rome, if you Death want to like Rome. look them up. Yeah. They do like uh they yeah. do a cool cover of Take On Me. They did yeah. uh Love is a Battlefield. That's yeah. my favorite. They did um, Careless Whisper, I think. Yeah. Yeah. That's I think they're it's all on YouTube. Um was it Pump Up the Jams? No. They did, they, they, did they did they? Yeah. I don't remember that one. Pump they did the up sign. The jams. Yeah, yeah, this they did the sign too, yeah. From that who the fuck yeah. did that Take song? Them. I don't remember. I was trying to think I was thinking, was that Aqua? I was like, No, that's Barbie Girl. Mm-hmm. I can't remember who did it, but you know, I saw the Just, sun. If you like, yeah. If you like, yeah. if, you like if you like Death in June, go check out Death in Rome. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's funny to me because hearing the songs, it's like if you didn't know that those were, like if you didn't know, for example, that that was a cover of like a Pat Benatar song or an Aha song, yeah. you'd be like, oh, that's a cool like goth sounding song. They just sing it slow and dark. Yeah. Pump up the jazz. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure. I don't think I've heard that one, actually. Yeah, I have yeah. a bunch of them on my phone, but that's not one of them. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, go check them out. Like I said, all yeah. the most of their stuff's on YouTube, I think. All right. So as I said, episode 120, uh, 143, rather, and we are doing more true crime. We're doing two cases that occurred in Sweden. Now they were fifty years apart, but I decided to do them on the same show because one, they're both in Sweden. Yeah, we're visiting um, Sweden tonight. Yes, we are. Yes. Two, the victims were both prostitutes, and three. They were particularly gruesome and weird okay. murders. So the first of them is simply called the Atlas Vampire Case. That comes from the 1930s. And the second one is the murder of Katrine da Costa, which comes from 1984 and is actually the loose basis of Stieg Larsson's international bestseller, The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo. Like this is where he got the idea for it. And kind of like the media that, uh, you know, that kind of happened in the wake of this particular murder. It's good movies, actually. Yeah. Well, yeah. the books, honestly, yeah. I love those books. Um, yeah. I read them. I think I read all three of them in one single weekend. Yeah. When that I used new, to have time to read. That new girl with the dragon tattoo wasn't bad. I liked that one. I did, too, actually. I liked it. I yeah, the girl kind of like watching club. a Bond flick. Yeah. I liked it. You know, that was a new, it wasn't Naomi. You know, Naomi's kind of, Numi's kind of, she's kind of old for that role now, I think. Yeah. She's got to be in her 40s by now. I mean, she doesn't look it, but she's got to be. She, I can't remember. Yeah, because the they... The new girl was pretty good, though. Was it? Okay, now, which one? Because I know, I saw both versions. I saw, because the original trilogy, they did it in Swedish, and then they yeah. did an American version also. Because I think the American version had Daniel Craig in it, now that I'm thinking about yeah. it. Yeah, and then uh, the the, the Numi Rapace ones were also in there. They were in Swedish. Oh, okay, she a, so maybe she was the original. She was the original one, yeah. I can't From remember I who... Now I can't remember who played her in the... They were both good. Like, I remember I remember liking the Swedish ones and the English They're language long. ones. That's the only problem. They're well, long Well, it's a very um, convoluted story. Yeah. Like, But, like, the books are like that, too. But they totally, like, just sucked me in. Yeah. Like, I started reading the first one, and I think I stayed up... the Like, the first book, I just stayed up, like, all night reading it because I couldn't yeah. put it down. The new, <laughs> one that came out, the new one we saw in the theater that came, came, came out a few months back was a little more fast paced it was almost kind of like an action movie I liked it though yeah I think they're cool trying to and stuff, even know. though like I said I'm pretty sure that Stieg Larsson died mm-hmm. but um, I think they're trying to do like another trilogy trilogy or like reboot the franchise a little bit which yeah. you know that's fine with me because I like that character I like Elizabeth Slander she's like a cool character but yeah so the second case we're going to talk about uh, the prostitute murder that happened in Sweden in the 80s was actually the case that inspired Stieg Larsson to write the first book so there you go All right, so before we get into the true crime weirdness, um, just have a couple of shout outs today. Got two very nice, generous PayPal donations this week, or I guess in the last couple weeks, because like I said, we don't record these regularly anymore. We try to get like a few ahead. But so we got some donations from Melanie, who sends us donations pretty much every month or every couple of months. Um, So thank you very much. Also, one from Jason. Now, like I said, um, I think that, because uh, Jason was actually the first person that clued me into this, was that the PayPal button that was on our blog, because, you know, at the end I always say, you know, if you want to give a PayPal donation, go like go to the blog, and there's a little PayPal button. Um, that wasn't working, so I had to go in there and fix it. But I fixed it now, so it's working fine if you Yeah, some people go. don't like to deal with Patreon. So if you just want to send us some money on PayPal, it's good. Yeah, Everybody would cool. just give us a dollar. That'd be six grand. Because we busted six grand. 
in terms of we did i wanted to like mention that it's yeah. like i keep forgetting like i keep forgetting what i wanted yeah. to mention but yeah we finally did get over six thousand subscribers on youtube so thank you very much yeah, you guys finally made it yeah i know it took a while yeah there was something <laughs> about we got to we got to four thousand pretty quickly yeah seemed like it maybe it was even the whole way you know how it is when you get i don't know it age. seemed like the first thousand took a while were hard it was like a yeah. hard slog and then the next thing you know, it was like we were at 3,000. Yeah, and then it kind of sped up. And then, yeah. you know, I don't know. So, like I said, we're yeah, we're not super, like, we keep track of it. He probably keeps track closer track of it than I do. Like, I kind of glance at it. I'm like, yeah, whatever. I'm just kind of worried about producing the show and it's making out. sure it's good and making sure it comes out on it, time. It and, got into the high 5,000s, and it stalled out for a long time. And then all of yeah. a sudden, boom, it came back. Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah, so. It's just weird. It had to do with... It wasn't just us, it was everybody. They were messing with those algorithms. Well, I actually, it's funny because I got a little, um, what you call it? They, YouTube sent me a little uh, creator, uh, not a, well, not a quiz. What's the word I'm looking for? A survey. Yeah. They sent me a little survey about what I liked about YouTube, what I didn't like about YouTube. Like, cause so, so I guess they're like messing with some stuff, like trying to make it better for people. So I went in there and like, you yeah. know, answered their little questions and stuff like that. Yeah, but uh, yeah, we're getting your messages on Facebook and uh, Tom Shitty Movies. I got I got my own little channel on on Facebook called Tom's Shitty Movies with S H I D D Y. I know I keep forgetting. I haven't been that. messing with it lately though. We've been busy, uh, re you know. But yeah, I'll we get haven't back really been it. watching too many shitty movies no. with a, with two Ds. No, well, we we've just been so busy lately. Well, yeah, because we've been watching movies to review. I've been, because yeah. I got excited because I saw Netflix, they posted the third season of Ash vs. Evil Dead. So I'm You're like, right, okay, yeah. well, we got to watch that. But then, like, I kept watching and then I kept falling asleep because right. <laughs> our kitty wakes us up so early that yeah, we have to go to the, I, I fall asleep at like 10 in the morning. And we have to do movie reviews constantly. So we got to watch movies and we have to go to the theater. Yeah. Boy, it's fucking breaking me down. I'm watching these movies so you people don't have to. Our, you, our life is so rough. Yeah, I tell you, a lot of these movies, well, we'll see. Not really. Movies. Like, the ones this, I think the ones this week, and actually by the time this show goes up, people will have already seen the matinee show. The ones this week actually turned out better than I was uh, okay. expecting. They're okay. I thought. Yeah, they were better than I thought, but. You know. They weren't fantastic. They are okay. Well, I thought you liked them at the time. Yeah, I liked them you're, at the you're time. You're just being crabby right yeah. now. Yeah. Because <laughs> you're in like. They're okay. You know, they're not bad, but they're not great either. But I think most movies are like that. You know? Well, like I said, most movies have been like that forever. Yeah, I think they were like that forever. Most of them are forgotten. Yeah. So. You only just remember the good ones because right. that's why you remember them, because they were really good. You don't remember, like, all the 40 mil bajillion other shitty ones right, that yeah. everybody forgot, <laughs> forgot right. about. Like, in the 80s, particularly, like, a, a fucking shit ton of movies came right. out in the 80s that were just, like, terrible and forgettable. All right, so... Let's go ahead and get into this case. Then. Let's go back yeah. to 1932. Okay. And talk about the case known as the Atlas Vampire. All right. And you will shortly see why this why this is called. So this is this. in thirty two? Nineteen thirty two. Okay. Now, this took place in Stockholm, Sweden, and there was a neighborhood called the Atlas neighborhood, which is why this case is called the Atlas Vampire. Duh. Now apparently yeah, well Duh. thank you. <laughs> You're such a dick. So all right. So apparently, like a lot of uh, prostitutes and whatnot, like lived in this particular area. So there's this woman that lived there who was a prostitute. She was 32 years old. Her name was Lily Lindestrom. And she was actually, and I suppose this was unusual for the time, um, you know, because most prostitutes back then, probably as now, well, well, I guess not now, but back then, mostly street prostitutes. Uh, didn't have too many quote unquote call girls, like people come into your house, like you'd make an appointment and people would come over and stuff like that. But that's what this girl was doing. So she was a little bit ahead of her time, I guess, in the, in the whole prostitution game. <laughs> so she, yeah, so she ran her own like prostitution business out of her apartment. Now she also had, um, a neighbor and I think the neighbor lived downstairs and her neighbor's name was Minnie Jansen and she was 35 and she was also a prostitute. So I guess the, the two of them were friends and they kind of like looked out for each other and stuff. So one night and this is in like uh, late April, early May, 1932. So Lily comes downstairs and knocks on Minnie's door and asks if she can borrow some condoms 
And now, many said that that was kind of a pretty common thing. I guess Lily was always running out of condoms, you know. You never have enough hanging around the house, I guess. She got, yeah. she had a rush and it was busy. Right. So uh, she said, yeah, she was always coming down. Sometimes she'd just be naked or just have a robe on or something. She'd just be like, hey, Minnie, can I borrow some condoms? And she said, sure. She said it was about 9 o'clock at night. So she gives her the condoms. Lily goes by. She says, thank you very much. And she goes back upstairs, presumably to entertain whatever clients she had up there. So then a couple of days go by. And Minnie thinks to herself, gee, I haven't seen Lily around in a couple of days. That's a little weird. So she calls uh, her apartment, no answer. She goes up there and knocks on the door. Again, no answer. So she's like, okay, this is fucked up. So she calls the police. So the police come over and they bust into the flat. And in Lily's bedroom, they find Lily Lindstrom. She is dead. She's clearly been dead for a couple of days. She's lying face down in her bed. Um, her head has been kind of bashed in um, with a blunt instrument, presumably. There is, um, I think they're like her clothes were very neatly folded, like uh, on a chair next to the bed. There is still a condom sticking out of her anus oh. that has semen in it. Damn. And almost all of her blood is gone. Okay, now you have to back up a little bit. <laughs> you have to back up a little bit. All her blood's gone. Pretty much. Uh, most but of it's it not was on the gone. floor. It's not no. there. Was there an incision on her? No. Huh? How does that happen? See, this is why they called the Casey Atlas vampire. Now, the only other thing they found in the apartment was a gravy ladle that had, like, some traces of blood in it. So near as they could figure... The person that killed her came into the apartment and drank her blood with the ladle. But they couldn't figure out. Okay. They're like, one, she was clearly beaten to death in the head. And what I, I read on this one site that apparently the way, because there was still, um, you know, the condom sticking out of her butt and mm -hmm. the fact that she had died, like, from blunt force trauma to the back of the head, they said maybe... That I mean, this was presumably the last client that she had. Well, May we call it, but they would be the last yeah, one. May well, she's never yeah. charged one after that, right? <laughs> well, yeah, you would think, unless somebody came after that and was like a necrophilia. Oh, it's free. Oh, the, right. That's what I. You yeah. know what? You know what? It's like it's it's, it's sick, the, it's but the, yeah, some well, Gary people Ridgeway. would. That's what I mean. Gary or Ridgeway. Ted Bundy. He'd go back, man. They'd be all about He'd that. They'd come in there and be later. like, oh. Win win. They'd be all rotten and everything. Weeks I don't even later. have to pay. And the cops were like, "Why the hell were you going back there that late?" And he says, "It was free." Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, Gary Ridgeway. Like I said, just yeah. like when you put. It was free. Just like when you put jelly and hot sauce on your sausage and biscuits. It's free. Yeah. At Waffle House because That's it's right. free. She gets on me about that. <laughs> If just you take this old, just this is an old funny. Southern thing. You know what I mean? If you've ever <laughs> That's spent what time every around, time you said it's free, it reminds any me time, of Gary you're gonna spend Any time around Mississippi or Alabama, you go to the old wards. You guys know what wards is. You get a biscuit with sausage. All right, sausage biscuit. Well, it doesn't have anything on it, but they got hot sauce and they got Great jelly, jelly there for free. So yeah. you put that on it. It's good. Sweet and spicy. It's not that. Yeah, it's not that weird. I let, I let her. I let. I made her try it. It's yeah. good. It's good. It's it like it's not that weird. I just Tabasco pick on you. Basco sauce and jelly. Great I just jelly. pick on you because you said. Yeah. Well, no, because like, what is what is that? Um, and for that you, sandwich British, Monte Cristo. Yeah, for you British people. I like Monte Cristo. For you British people that are out there, you're always getting fucking confused about what jelly is. Okay, jelly is not gelatin or jello. Okay, jelly for us is. Like preserves, or, preserves, but or preserves they're not made skinny. with pectin. It, yeah, yeah. It, what, what would you call preserves? Um, preserves are just preserves. Uh, what's it? Jam. The British would call yeah. it jam, but That's it doesn't like, have whole fruit in it. It's like m kind of mushed up fruit and yeah, other stuff. But jelly doesn't have fruit in it. It's like jam without fruit. It's like jam made with fruit juice. Yeah. It's totally clear. I've made jelly before. Yeah. Um, I made it in my home ec class in high school actually. Yeah. It's basically, it's fruit juice and pectin 
and some other shit. I can't right. remember what. Not a lot of things. So when we're Sugar. talking about peanut butter and jelly sandwiches, we're talking about peanut butter and jam on toasted bread with butter on that bitch. Okay. Well, yeah, if you want to make These a good These British people don't understand butter, this. They don't understand this shit, man. They laugh at us for that. I offered a peanut butter and jelly sandwich to a British woman one time who was over here over here visiting, and she was like, no, no, thank you. I said, you turn it down, peanut butter? Her husband says, you better accept this, but peanut butter. You weren't here for that. that was, yeah, I think you were here for that. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> We're going to make you move eat on, peanut butter. Let's move on. Well, and like I said, it's not just peanut butter. Also, almond butter and yeah. cashew butter. That's right. It's really good. Because I see all these videos on YouTube, these European people making fun of us for eating peanut butter. How the hell can you eat peanut butter? We know how to make peanut butter. Peanut butter is really good. We know what to do with peanut butter. And Well, peanuts in general are really yeah, good. Like peanuts yeah. and candy bars are they good. They never had a Reese's peanut butter cup. Yeah, the, I thought they had those over there. I don't know, man. I'll tell you what. When I was living in Boston, they had a candy shop down in Cambridge Square. Yeah. It's probably still there. It's right there near the right there near the pit, right there near we call it used to call it the pit. It's where all the little punk rock kids and the goth kids used to hang outside T stop, Cambridge T stop. Right across the street from Harvard. There was a candy candy shop there that used to make their own candy. And they made peanut butter cups the size of a fucking apple. That's mm -hmm. how big they were like that fucking tall and yeah. that big around. They were like that big around that tall. God, they were good and they had a couple different flavors. One of the flavors was peanut butter and grape jelly inside the dam. All right. And I think it was white chocolate. Okay, the, now, uh, yeah. Man, that shit was good. I'm going to hop right on that. Fuck. Because here's the thing. One of my one of my very favorite things, and Reese's does this, and like I've had some from like better candy stores that are actually yeah. better, but a peanut butter peanut butter cup made with white chocolate? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, with, yeah, it was peanut butter with grape jelly. And yes, I know white chocolate is technically yeah. not chocolate. Don't you could get, get fat me. just looking at those fuckers. You didn't even have well, to eat I them. I certainly You would. could just, just look at them. <laughs> I think they were like $5 a cup. Because my metabolism hates them. They were like 5 Five dollars a cup, and you could only eat one. It would be like they were like as big as that piece of the big as that tape. It was like that. Oh, yeah. They weighed, I would eat that. They but had it to would weigh be, like it was probably weighed almost a half a pound. It, but that would be the only thing I would eat all day, and then I would throw it up later. But it would Damn. probably taste just as good mm. coming back up. <laughs> <You're> nasty. <laughs> okay, let's get back into the show. So yeah, okay. So not only this. Like I said, they find the gravy ladle that has, like, sort of, uh, you know, smears of blood in it. Also, they found, like, sticky saliva, like, on the back, like, on her back and shoulders, as though the dude had, like, licked her. Yeah. <laughs> like, she would, and what they thought, like I said, um, and I think this is what I was getting at before we went off on a tangent about uh, peanut butter cups, was that... I read a site that said because of the way the, the condom was still in her butt and because she had been, like, beat up, you know, in the back of the head, someone presumed that while they were anally uh, penetrating her, let's put it that yeah. way, that they were doing what they would call a donkey punch. Donkey punch. And it was donkey yes, punch. That, and they, they don't know, but they it's presumed that maybe... It's a 1930s style donkey punch, but it was yeah. a killer. Donkey Which punch did he up. mean to? I don't know. Yeah, of course you can't. Do, I, yeah. You can't do that by accident. You can't beat somebody to death by accident. You know, you have to. You, it requires effort. Yeah. A donkey punch. Donkey punch is just a playful threat. Yeah. They don't actually kill a person or hit the person. Well, I would hope. Because you know I mean? <laughs> that would be fucked up. Yeah, I'm gonna hit you in the head. head. <laughs> Pop. Yeah. Like yeah. Yeah, That's like one of those yeah, weird no. things where it's like, oh, I'm going to no, strangle that, myself. That was, they didn't, have, they didn't have donkey punches in the 1930s. That was somebody trying to kill a motherfucker is what that was. He probably didn't want to pay. Maybe not. Yeah. And, that's and he didn't like, didn't like whores. You know, that's the mentality. Of those guys. I don't like these whores. But see, okay. See, that's, the, you know, Gary Ridgway, Gary Ridgway had that problem. I don't have them sexual problems. You know, yeah. You know, uh oh, you know. here we go. Well, well, that's what they that's what they call uh, some men have sexual problems. Yeah. Well, this yeah. guy clearly did. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's what they would call a mission focused or mission yeah. motivated killer because it's like they they think that they're punishing people who are transgressing from right. some imaginary moral code like i don't like hookers i don't like gay people i don't like this that, and the other thing yeah so they think they're punishing you so it's it's like some weird righteous thing 
Yeah, well... I feel like Jack the Ripper might have had that. Yeah, a lot of them had that. Yeah. Um, I, I'm pr- pretty sure Ridgeway had that. I think uh, Raider had that. Mm. But Raider was also kind of like embarrassed of himself, too. Because... I'd he, be embarrassed he if I would dress up like also. he was a bad girl, you know, and bury himself and take pictures of himself. Oh, I'm going to spank myself. Yeah, I'm yeah. so naughty. Taking pictures of himself in his fucking stockings and shit. And his merry widow oh, on. In his garter. Sexy ass Dennis. Well, you know how it is. Sometimes, you know, sometimes a man needs a good photograph, you know. <laughs> Can't find a model, you're going to use yourself, you know. Sometimes I'm a bad girl, you know. Fucking <laughs> <laughs> Dennis Rader. Right? Oh my God! Okay, sometimes that. Sometimes I'm a bad. Sometimes you know. Sometimes a man has to be a bad girl, you know. <laughs> uh, seriously, that audio clip of you saying, mm-hmm. "Sometimes I'm a bad girl," mm-hmm. I am gonna keep that yeah, separate. Yeah, you get that shit. I don't give a fuck. And I'm going to use that fuck, on man. various. <laughs> <laughs> well, halfway through the first segment probably and i'm already i've been drinking you know so i'm gonna i'm gonna talk shit that's what i'm gonna do you know but we got I'm, I'm trying to focus no on well it. here's what's funny and i i wanted to mention sometimes i'm going to channel dennis okay you know i'm gonna mention this on this show now just right. because the other night you said this and i thought it was funny yeah is that we were um we were playing with our kitty baby yeah. cookie which you guys will know yeah. And he says, just kind of apropos of nothing, he's like, I've suddenly become the kind of man who talks baby talk to a cat. Yeah, you know, I remember when I <laughs> and was... And I was like, and? Yeah, when I was young, when I was, when, I, <laughs> when I was a younger man, you know, when I was a younger man, I'd see these guys, you know, I'd be coming out of the service, you know, and I'd see these fucking soft-ass civilian motherfuckers talking baby talk to fucking dogs and to cats and shit and i'm like you fucking pussy and then all of a sudden now i'm that guy i'm down there <laughs> talking to you talking yeah. baby talk to the kitty but the but see that's what did you learn that there's nothing wrong with that no there's something wrong with it there's something <laughs> no, wrong there's with it. there's something wrong with it but i've accepted it i've accepted that i do that I've accepted that I've that no, guy. No, there's not. I've accepted that guy. I'm, you know what I mean? Would Conan do that? Fuck no. Conan would not do that. He better fucking do that. Would Sergeant Todd do that from the soldier? No, Sergeant Todd wouldn't do that. Would Snake Plissken do that? Fuck no. Yeah, but, but they're sociopaths. Call it whatever, call it whatever <laughs> you want to call it. Call it whatever you want. Whatever I have to tell you, it. though, just from a female perspective... I'm baby I'm, talking to the kitty. And I'm not speaking, you know, I, I would never presume to, like, speak for the entire uh, female gender. Mm-hmm. But the second a dude is, like, picks up a kitty and goes, Kitty! I'm just like, I love that shit. I especially love dudes that love kitties. Look, let's, let's I like con- dogs too. Let's but... continue with the show. You're trying to embarrass me and everything. <laughs> I'm gonna start, start channeling a raider here in a minute. Dennis Raider. You've already done that. Okay, I'm gonna start channeling him. All right. So here's the weird thing. So Lily Lindstrom, like I said, the only wound as far as I know, and like I said, this happened in nineteen thirty two. As far as I know, the only wound they found on her was the wound that killed her, which was the, you know, blunt force trauma to the back of the head. No incisions, no nothing. Almost all of her blood was gone. There was no, there was hardly any blood on the bed. There was no blood on the floor. Did they no cut nothing. her open? Who? This girl. Did they cut her open and try to find out where this, where how she lost this blood? Not, I don't know. Could it be possible he ruptured her internally and drank it from 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 one of her orifices? Orifices. Yeah, it? they might have like thought of that because I think that. I mean, they were kind of operating on the assumption. They're like, look, this dude, like, scooped the blood up with the gravy ladle and drank it. Or he brought a syringe and drank it from the syringe. Or he took it with him. Or he had some kind of, like, suction device. Or he was an actual vampire. Maybe he had a needle. (laughs) And he stuck it in a carotid artery and drank it. They did, like, think of that. That maybe he had brought something. But you'd need, like, a big fucking... I mean, that would well, take a while. I think there's about, a, what, a gallon and a half of blood in the body? What is it, 12 pints? Something I like I thought that. it was about, like, a gallon and a half. I thought it was 12 I don't pints. think it was two gallons. Maybe he brought, like, a big fucking... Maybe he brought some of your big fucking Kugel Khan jars. Fucking right. You would, you, you would need a bunch of those. Yeah, you just, and like... You'd need like, a whole lot of time. 
That's what I mean. Well, or you just store. She was something last and take seen with you. She was last seen um, like two days before they found her dead. I think it was two or three days. So he could have like hung out. The only the only other case that I can think of that was like this was uh, what was his name Richard Chase. Yeah. Richard Chase, the vampire killer from California. This was back in the seventies. Yeah. And once a person's dead, you know, the heart isn't pumping, so it's kind of hard to get the blood out of the body. So what Yeah, you it do gets, is like, kind of sluggish. You have to make a pretty big incision, and then you kind of have to, like, usually they go inside, like, the abdomen, and they try to scoop it out of there with something like a cup. He was, he'd go to the garbage, you can go get a cup, like, an old fucking used, uh, you know, go into the woman's gar- kitchen garbage and get, like, an old used yogurt cup and try to fucking scoop it up out of there and drink as much of it as he like can. Like a big gulp. Yeah. But they can't really Blood, get, big you gulp. can't really get it all. That's so what I'm, see. That's I'm, what weirds me out about yeah. this fucking shit. Like I said, it's from 1932, so I don't know. Like from the accounts of it, I don't know how much blood was actually at the scene. I have seen like a couple of photographs of it, um, and it doesn't really look like there's. Any, I couldn't really see any blood yeah, no, from the I'm picture, say, but it's old. How much more of this case is there? Not is really, not this, much. This I is mean, what I'm going to say. I'm going to say the Swedes fucked up, and they assumed that she had been bled, bled dry. Probably most of her blood was still in her. That's what I'm going to say. I think they fucked up somehow. It's hard to get all every drop of blood out of somebody, especially well, when Well, like I dead. said, I don't think it was every drop. They're just saying most of it was gone. And there wasn't any... I can't see. Or there wasn't a, a large amount like a, in the area. You know what I mean? I can't see how... Other you, than in the ladle. The only way you're going to be able to do that was some kind of bombing equipment or some kind of surgical equipment. If Ooh, you did, maybe you, it was a funeral dude. Maybe he did, came in with like some embalming shit and he said, oh, it, this is my fetish. Yeah, and if you did it in another way, you're going to make a mess. So, yeah. You know what I mean? So the only clean way was something kind of like surgical or some kind of embalming and you would do it post-mortem. And then you take that equipment away, you know. Maybe you could do it that way. But, you know, I'm just thinking this is highly unlikely. I think it's more likely that the investigators made a mistake. Hmm. That she wasn't missing blood. That's what I'm thinking. I don't know, man. How do they know she was missing all this blood? Well, I presume they did postmortems. They knew how to do postmortems in the 1930s. You know what I'm saying? I mean, they they knew how much blood was supposed to be in there as opposed to how much blood is now in there. Maybe she was very dehydrated or something at the time. I don't know, though. And they, I don't know. they made some kind of miscalculation. It's got to be some kind of an error. I don't know. I don't know. That's just what I'm saying. I'm saying... There was no signs of any kind of massive trauma. There was no incision Other place. than to her other, head. Other than to her head. But there wasn't any blood spilled anywhere. You beat somebody's head in enough to kill them. You know what I mean? There's going to be some blood. Yeah, there but was if, a bit, but not but not she, as much as. But you if she would think. bleeds to death, the blood would be everywhere. So that's not what happened. Right. Except it was in the gravy ladle. That's the only other place they found they it. They know that was human blood. Yeah. Was in the At least in the 30s, they could tell the difference between human blood and animal blood. And I think they could even tell what blood type it was. How do you get blood out of that girl and get it into that ladle? That's what everybody is wondering. I, I, just, I just, I don't know, man. I think That's this, why they call this the Atlas Vampire Case. Because they feel like somebody came in there and took most of her blood and either drank it or took off with it and did some other shit with it that nobody knows about. And the weird thing about it, too, is that... I think they, I mean, obviously she's a prostitute, so they had to, you know, go and talk to all of her, like, former clients and all of this other stuff. I think they had about nine suspects at one point, but all of them were eventually cleared, lack of evidence and whatnot. And there were really no other similar crimes to that. It seemed like a one-off, which is unusual, because this seems like a serial killer motif, but they didn't have any other crimes that were like that that happened over that time period. So I kind of feel like this was almost, maybe it was a personal vendetta of some sort. Maybe he beat her senseless. She didn't die from the beating. But then he put it, he put some kind of IV in her 
and 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 pumped the blood That's out of her. What I'm and thinking. was having sex with her during that time, and then he left with the blood. Yeah, maybe it's something like that. That's what I'm thinking. Like I feel like this was maybe this might have been some guy that had visited her previously, so maybe he kind of knew her. But maybe he had like this weird fucking fetish. And maybe he was even building shit up over time, like getting a little bit weirder, a little bit weirder, a little bit weirder. And then he shows up at her place and he's like, hey, you know, I have this thing about, um, you know, drawing blood. And it's like, is that okay? And maybe she was kind of like, okay, whatever, man. And then she didn't realize. She was beaten unconscious. How far it would go. If she was beaten unconscious, though, she would just lay there with the needles in place and her heart pumping the blood out of her body. Blood of her, yeah. Into into a bag. Yeah. And, you know, some serial killers have really been into things like anatomy and medical stuff. Oh, yeah. You know, because Dahmer was into all that stuff. So maybe he had planned for that. He may have wanted her blood for some reason. Or he had some kind of fantasy about having sex with a woman as she was dying. Because I'm sure to bet That's, I'm sure to yeah. bet the sex was kind of post mortem as she was fucking unconscious dying from blood loss, he's having sex with her. I kinda of feel like that's kinda of what I'm feeling yeah. as well. Like because like I said, I feel like I mean, obviously the the condom that was still in her butt had semen yeah. in it. So obviously he was doing that. He was Perhaps punching her in the head, either with his fist or with some other instrument that he probably had. Probably with an object that ki- yeah. killed her. He probably that's wasn't a, that strong. He probably that's just killed what I was, her. Yeah, with And then a as pipe she was laying shit. there in a coma, he hooked her up to his fucking IV bags and stuff. And he, she pumped all her blood out of her maybe carotid artery or something. And he's raping her. Yeah. And then uh, then he collects the blood, he unhooks everything, just leaves the condom in place, just kind of like because it's kind of degrading or something, you know? And then he just walks out of there with her blood you know, might have two or three bags of that blood yeah before she actually her heart stopped beating you know and who knows maybe he maybe he sells the blood maybe he's a medical student or something or yeah although like i said it's almost sounds like a fetishistic sounds like fetish yeah i mean well, it's weird the, but i've heard weirder you don't steal the blood just to sell it you're not yeah. gonna get enough for it but you might be a fetish it might be a fetish thing of having sex with somebody dying of blood loss and then now you got the blood yeah this which is, is what got, caused it's like i got her soul type of deal you know what i mean and you keep that around your refrigerator for a little while maybe you do drink some of it but maybe you sell it too i don't know i do kind of feel like that's kind of what she i'm probably dra- he probably drank the only it. thing that that bothers me about that is that there were no other crimes like that in the area like something like that a fetishistic type of crime, that specific a fetish. Well, maybe it wasn't that good, so he... he so he's like, nah, yeah, fuck yeah, it. Yeah, fuck it. He didn't I'm it just going to go back to yeah. doing the regular it shit. It disappointed him, so it did, he didn't do it again. Yeah, maybe it wasn't as cool as... Yeah. <laughs> That's fucked up. But yeah. like I said, I write about these cases all the time. It's like, these people do some fucked up shit. But yeah, so it's sad because it. I feel like... He left so much physical evidence behind. I mean, they had his semen, they had his saliva, they had all this other shit that he left there. And I'm not sure, but like, they're like, her clothes were left on the chair. They're like, did she fold the, they were very neatly folded, like on the chair. And did she do that or did he do that, like after he left? Like they thought maybe he had OCD or something. Uh, probably something she did. Maybe. But it's just, it's just super weird case. And it's funny because. Um, I was reading one account of it, and um, there's not a lot about this case in English uh, anyway, but there's this one woman, and she had written a blog post about it, and she actually lived in the same building um, as this woman had lived in back in the 30s, even though she lived like in the other side of it. And she said, now, there's um, this kind of closed in like corridor that goes between the two buildings, like where, and the, like the laundry room is in there. So they're like, maybe the killer could have come and gone through there and no one would have seen him because nobody apparently saw this dude. I mean, they interviewed so many people. They interviewed like even her friend, Minnie, who was right downstairs and they were both prostitutes and they knew each other. And like I said, they borrowed condoms from each other all the time. And uh, she didn't see anybody. Nobody saw anybody leaving her, or coming in. Guaranteed, was one of her regular customers. She was comfortable with it. I'm ki- yeah. I'm kind of feeling like that's probably, what it is. and it kind they, of like built up yeah. to that. I feel like they, it built up to that. They probably interviewed him. 
Yeah, and, and then he passed he was, the interview, and yeah. he was just like, "Yeah, I don't, I don't know." Somebody, somebody she knew well and liked. It's sad because I feel like, man, a lot of these prostitutes, he just, that's what happens, man. Well, they're coming in contact like, with sketchy dudes. Yeah. And these sketchy dudes know that, well, you know, if she comes up missing, then, you know what I mean? Then there's going to be so many suspects. There'd be a lot of suspects, and she moves a lot, and there won't be a lot to go on. So many guys are running out of here a day, you know what I mean? That's like maybe 50, 25 suspects, possible suspects per day. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, eh, too much traffic. Yeah, well, like I said, right. that's why a lot of them end up dead. And I, like I said, the next case we're talking about was just uh, Katrina DaCosta. It was the same kind of thing where, you know, and, and the same thing happened. I think I mentioned it on our show about the Highway of Tears and all that other kind of stuff. It's like, you know, you're a prostitute or you're hitchhiking or whatever. It's like, you know, I hate to say that, but you're kind of, you're not asking for it. Obviously, nobody is, but you're just putting yourself into a situation where... Yeah. It's just easy. It's easy for some guy who is a fucking predator to just be like, hey, no one's going to miss this chick or no one's going to look for this chick or there'll be too many suspects. Nobody associates me with her. So I'm just going to kill her and fucking dump her on the side of the road. Transient Or drink all her blood. Transient populations, women with high traffic zones in front of their houses, i.e. prostitutes. It's just, it's easy. Yeah. Easy. Transient populations, people coming and going, places where people are coming and going all the time. Yeah. I mean, that's, uh, investigators have a hard time finding people under those circumstances. Yeah. Thus, that's why H.H. Uh, Holmes and the uh, the big fair, that was, the World's Fair that was yeah, happening. in Chicago. What year was that? 19? Oh, gosh, I can't Something remember. early 1900s? He called it. You know, he knew that, well, they're going to have all these people and all this traffic from around the world to come to this World's Fair. I'll be able to kill these people and fucking the investigators and never figure it out. And no one will... Yeah, yeah no and one And they will. really didn't. No. No. Well, that's what I mean. It's like, I don't know if he killed as many people as they think, but I don't know. There, there's no way of knowing because so many people pass through that city and they're like, oh, hey, I yeah. haven't heard from... Aunt Helen in yeah. a while. Wonder whatever happened to her. She he, went to the World's Fair and I never heard yeah, from her. Again. He got caught because he killed somebody who was connected to him, and yeah, you know, yep. that's somebody he knew, and that's how you get caught. Well, yeah, and I yeah. think that's again why a lot of serial killers and why like you know whoever is stalking the Highway of Tears, the Texas Killing Fields, all these other. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure it's more truck than one, drivers, more than one person. Yeah, but yeah, yeah, I'm sure it's truck drivers also. Yeah. But because they're targeting hitchhikers, because they're targeting, you know, prostitutes, lot lizards, that type of person, it's like no one's going to connect you. If there's no connection to the victim, there's no in, like there's no way, you don't know where to start. A lot of times the victim doesn't have any family or stable family. And really... Or their family doesn't know where they are, exactly where they are. Yeah, that's the same thing. Almost the same thing. Um, A lot of times if they find an unidentified body... And they can't link it to anybody, and there isn't any family screaming. They can't, you know, about solving somebody's murder. Nothing really happens with those cases. Yeah. Well, like I said, I write right. about those all just, the time. It's like, it's yeah. sad. Just go to Detroit, if you don't believe me. Go to Detroit. Look at what's happening in Detroit. If you're a 40 year old black male indigent on welfare and you come up missing, those cops can't find you. That. It, they don't have the resources. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like I well, said. That's, that's a collapsing city. And yeah. that's the fucking highest, uh, that's the, what do they call it? The, the, uh, the highest risk population there. You know what I mean? It's a shrinking population. Lots of violence. Actually, it's down to now, now almost like uh, when you look at Detroit, you know, because I lived in Detroit for a few years. Detroit's almost becoming like small town in a way they're tearing it all down as it fucking disintegrates into nothing weird weird yeah. it's like it's like you know there was a whole culture there and everything about making machines jenny and i talk about it every now and then we were coming back from the theater and i was like man it's fucking weird there's guys giving tours of it online on youtube as they drive around showing you detroit and what you can watch it disappear you can watch old factories you know what i mean places where i used to work part time you know what i mean there's empty now it's like part of a dying part of a dead culture vanished weird well it's you know everything is 
at least temporary. Ephemeral. Yeah, yeah. everything is transient. I don't know. Yeah. I don't, I'm not as bothered by it as you are, I don't think. <laughs> Like, well, oh, well, it's old, it's not Well, they always anymore. have a concept of progress, that you get one thing done, and then you built up on that, and then it builds, and it builds, not and it builds, and it builds. No, it's not how it goes. It's going all over the place. Yeah, there's really, temporary. there's no, I mean, it's it's not like a straight ahead or no, straight forward. No, a huge metropolis can vanish into dust. Yeah. Just go to Europe and look at fucking the ancient cities that are fucking gone, you know? That's what I mean. It's not. Is just, you know, like, temporary. I'm not saying it's not sad. It's just that yeah. it doesn't bother me because it's not that Whole strange. Pot. Whole populations, whole cultures, languages, everything just kind of vanish. Yeah. Yeah. It's like I said, it's sad. It's a shame, but there's nothing you can do about it. It's just the nature of existence. I don't know. It just it doesn't bother me all that much. (laughs) Well, I always thought that I was immune. Why? Why would you think that? I don't know. There's just something about it. You know, you think you're immune to it. Hmm. That's interesting. Yeah. I don't know. I wonder why it's like, I've heard a lot of people say that, especially, I think especially when they're younger, especially yeah. when teenagers and stuff. Oh, I feel immortal. Yeah. And so when I, you're young, you think you're immune I to I never felt shit. like that. Yeah. Ever. I, I, I don't understand why people ever thought that. Well. I was like, you thought you were immortal? Really? As I, start, as I started. To, <laughs> I never thought well, that. Well, nobody's saying that. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that as I got into my late 30s and early four, my early 40s, I realized that the things that I took for granted was temporary bullshit. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, it's weird. I don't know. I was I was a weird person, I guess. Like yeah, you were a, always a freak, as I. I yeah. Yeah. No, I'm 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 owning that right now <laughs> yeah. Yeah. because even when I was I was a kid, I was just like, yeah, I'm gonna die someday, and all this is gonna be gone. Oh well, that's what happens. Well, I always kind of had that 1950s kind of mentality to where you know, like there's a constant progress, and you're building upon things. Mm. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Like you go to the moon, and then you go to the bars. And then the civilization gets bigger and bigger, and there's, you know, what I'm talking, you know what I mean, and the populations grow, and no, it's not how it happens. No, that's not how that that's works. Not how it happens. You know what? It maybe it's because um, I, I guarantee you, in a hundred years from now, we'll probably be in another dark age. There may not even be electricity. That's how bad I think it's going to get. Yeah, I mean, I don't know, but like I said, I I find it pointless to speculate because there are too many contingencies. Yeah. And maybe that's why, I think that's why, because ever since I was a kid, um, you know, I've been like a science dork, especially a biology dork, like since I was a kid. So I was like super into like, you know, I'll, I'll read all about evolution and stuff. So... I understand that things are not a straightforward progression. Like sometimes it's like... All this stuff dies out, and then I can't see how civilization can survive um, at the with the technology that we have. Technology is getting to the point to where it's making so much abundance that you no longer need any workers, so you're making people obsolete, and they can't survive in a work, you know, in, in a job economy anymore because the value of labor is vanishing. And we had a population based upon an old an older industrial civilization where you needed lots of people working. But that's not it. It's not like that anymore. Right. Robots are taking over. So I think what will end up happening is, is that the, the population will fucking, the pop, the the pop, you know, the population will fucking collapse. So you'll have a very, soon you'll have a very small amount of people. It may, but like I said. That book that you read, the Lucifer Principle. Yeah. It, population collapses and now there isn't enough population to continue a civilization. We read that book. Yeah. Who, what was that author? I can't remember. Yeah, it was a long time ago. I, so I have it over there on the yeah, shelf the, somewhere. The Lucifer Principle will kick in probably. But like I said, and I then don't... guys like me resurface again as fucking barbarians like the Saxons and the Normans. We just chop your heads off with an axe. That's but like I, I said, see, I feel like even speculating about that kind of thing is pointless because... Um, okay, did anybody foresee, uh, you know, the impact of the internet? Not really. Um, does anybody foresee the impact of... Because little things can blow up into, like, big the things... The problem that is can, money, though. ...that impact the culture in ways that we cannot anticipate. We are not smart enough to anticipate every contingency, so I feel that it is pointless well, this to is, speculate at least more than five or ten well, years Well, this ahead. is the problem I'm seeing. Okay. I just I find this, that a pointless exercise. This is the problem I'm seeing. Civilizations are basically a bunch of collections of jobs. Jobs are starting to become obsolete. 
So when jobs become obsolete, how well, types how? of jobs are becoming obsolete. But they're not being obsolete. replaced with other jobs. I'm I don't not, think at the I'm same not sure rate. about that, though. And when that happens, is how can you have a civilization without jobs? You know what I mean? A civilization is a bunch of interlocking jobs. Uh, and I think the civilization was built upon the fucking baby boom, at least here in the West. I don't know, man. I just, I just don't. I just think it's not going to go well. We'll see. Yeah, but you're like kind of negative about shit. I'm just, I'm neutral about stuff. I'm just like, I guess I'll wait to see what happens. I kind of think civilizations <laughs> are subtly balanced. You know what I mean? When you look at what happened, you know, at the end, of the, at the end of the Roman period, and it, I, I, I think we're probably going to go towards kind of like a. I think back into a dark age, I think. We're going to, uh, we're, we're going like to... I said, it's possible, but who knows what else might happen? So, right. like I said, I don't, I, I don't, I don't like really like to speculate. In I one know way what the, the solution other. is. You know what the solution is, though? Space travel. Just get the fuck off the planet. Constant growth. Go colonize Mars. Learn interstellar travel. You know, alleviate the population density on the Earth. Just start spreading out. That's what I think. <laughs> Learn faster than light travel. You know, you got you got to push it into like a... Yeah, get on that. Yeah, you got to push it. <laughs> well, you can get to Mars. You can get to yeah, Mars, you can I get know. to Moon. You know. Just Takes saying. a while. You okay. can get to the Moon. The, the Mars isn't that far. It No, it's not. We just used that damn nuclear putt-putt thing that fucking they made back in the fucking 50s, <laughs> 60s. Was that the, the Orion. The Orion space program. Just like that guy that everyone thought was Elvis. Or the ghost of Yeah, 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 yeah. So we're, we're pretty much done with this <laughs> Pretty case. much. The only other thing I wanted to say was the Atlas Vampire case. Some people have speculated that perhaps her killer was a cop who actually killed her and made it look super weird to, like, throw off the other yeah, cops. Yeah, man, that sounds... No. But, you know, I'm just saying. Oh, well, I didn't say that. I'm just saying yeah, somebody Yeah, I'm just saying they always come up with that weird shit where they can't... I want to say they either fucked up at the, at the post-mortem and her blood was in there. Or it was somebody who had kind of like a medical fetish and, and did what I I'm said. leaning somebody toward medical that. fetish. Because like I said, it's weird, but that's not the weirdest thing that I've he heard He was of. getting it from behind. and then Not fucking, by a long shot. He was getting it from behind at the time and he knocked her out like that and he jumped off of it and then he fucking goes and he hooks her up. And while she's fucking unconscious, pumps her blood out of these bags. Yeah, like and I said. and He's this... watching that blood go up in there in that bag and he's fucking hitting it. He's hitting it, Jenny. Watching that blood. Go into that bag, and then he, oh, and he's done, right? And he goes, "Shit, man, I can get out of here because this wasn't that good." He takes the but takes the blood anyway. But I'll take it with home, me anyway. I might be able he, to do something yeah, with this later. Yeah. And then he never does it again because it wasn't that good. Yeah, I I kind of feel of. like that's something, and I feel like this is somebody that had come to her before. Yeah. And like I said, I feel like it was one of those frog in boiling water things where yeah. it was kind of like he would introduce little small aspects of the fetish like every time so she wasn't alarmed yeah like so maybe he showed up this one with his whole, full like paraphernalia and she was just like and he's like yeah this is my whole deal now remember this is only one more thing that i brought yeah. last time and she's like okay fine whatever and he was probably cute so she was getting he was getting away with it you know what i'm talking about mm. he was well, probably cute so she was probably you know she's probably putting up with these damn fetishes well, yeah, because, you, you know, know, if he looked like Quasimodo, yeah, he, looked he, probably like wasn't, he probably wasn't going to get away with too He much. was probably a fucking medical student, some college student, something like that. That's, yeah, I kind of feel like maybe yeah. he was. Yeah. And then he was just kind of like, He's yeah, like, I'm yeah. going to try this shit out. So he wasn't, he wasn't. And then, like you said, maybe he just thought it wasn't that, all that yeah, cool. He's like, and he's yeah, like, man. Or he started yeah. killing people in a different way. Because he's like, let me try, I'm going to try yeah, something else. he did else. that, he did something else to try a new way. But then I'm going to expand my horizons in serial killing. I think he was probably, you're probably mm. talking about some kind of medical student. He was young. He was kind of cute, so she fucking put up with it. Maybe he was a good tipper. Yeah. I don't know. That's fucked up. No, nah, it's almost always more than that. It's, it's, <laughs> who he, it's who that guy was. Yeah. You know. That's why she can't yeah. trust any of them, man. That's like, they'll come at you and they're all nice and shit. Mm. Then before you know it, they're punching you in the back of the head while they're fucking you in the ass and then stealing all your blood. Yeah. So, well, if it killed her, I bet you he didn't use his fist. He used an object. I don't think object. he did either. Yeah, yeah, I think he did an object. He started hitting they, her they just they didn't. They didn't know what object it was because it wasn't. I'm a pretty there. strong, dude. I couldn't. I couldn't kill a woman by punching her in the back of my fist. 
Yeah, you'd have to get it like you'd have to get just an object. right. Yeah. And even then, I don't think it would do it. It probably I could like, stomp on a woman's head or a man's head with and and and, and crush her, crush their head, but I couldn't. Yeah, you could probably if you had like heavy boots on, yeah. you could probably kill somebody like that. You could stomp like them, but you, you could couldn't. stomp on and st- like stomp on their neck or something. Yeah. You could probably do that. But just punching somebody, no, mm-hmm. no, you need so you need some weight. You need some weight behind that. That's you know? what I'm thinking. But like yeah. I said, because they didn't find a weapon, right. I don't. They didn't like assume that it was a fist. They he assumed hit that he had used like a, a weapon. He used something like a like a baton. Yeah. A bar. Or like I said, like a pipe or pipe, a something poker like, or something, right, something like, like that. Yeah. Maybe even something he found in the apartment. They just never found it. Right. So yeah. So that was the Atlas Vampire case. Like I said, not a huge amount of detail. Unless you can speak uh, Swedish. You might find more information about it than I did because I only found English language uh, stuff and there's not a lot of that. But when we come back from the break, we are going to take a break right now and probably refresh our drinks, which will probably be a mistake. God but damn. We, but we'll see how that goes. Uh, when we come back, we will talk about the case of Katrine da Costa from 1984. As I said, this is the case that uh, Stieg Larsson loosely based his book, The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo, on. So uh, we're going to talk about that when we come back from the break. So we will be back in just a few minutes. The Faceless Villain, a collection of the eeriest unsolved murders of the 20th century, Volume 2, includes cases spanning the years from 1960 through 1979, featuring such infamous crimes as the triple homicide at Lake Bodum, the family massacre known as the Good Heart Murders, the serial killings of the Zodiac, Bible John, Jack the Stripper, and the Freeway Phantom, the slaughter of dozens of women and girls along the Highway of Tears and the Texas Killing Fields, and the mysterious death of suspected spy, the Isdal Woman, along with dozens of other fascinating and horrifying accounts. Buy it now from Amazon in print, Kindle, or audiobook format. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are back for the second half of episode 143 about murder in Sweden. I'm back, and I'm, I'm in fucking three sheets to the wind. You are. I'm in full 1970s Merv Griffin mode. <laughs> I feel like I'm on a murder. All you need is a show. cigar, man. That's all I need, man. Oh, I want to remind you guys something. Well, we, we were talking about the two Blue Yetis that we have for sale. We also have this for sale, too. We yeah, I'm not forever. sure. What brand is that? I don't know. We did our first couple audiobooks with, with this. It wasn't really good enough. It was a $50 mic. Yeah, but we, it's, it's a pretty good, like, you know. Yeah, it's got a stand. standard. It'd be good basic. for web shit. Yeah. But, uh,. It's a good USB mic, I guess, just for web stuff. But uh, shit, man, fucking, we can set up what for, fifteen? Yeah. Fifteen plus shipping. If anybody needs it, just hit us. Yeah, up. we're giving we're giving fans the first crack at this. Yeah. If not, it's going up on. Yeah. eBay. If not, if not, I'm selling money back. Because, yeah, like I said, we just spent two hundred thirty dollars getting a whole new, <laughs> getting a whole new system. Yeah. <laughs> Even though we just spent all this money on this new Yeti, and mm-hmm. it's just. We need a like I said, system. it might not be Mac compatible. I think that's that might be kind of the issue. It has to do with drivers. It doesn't have drivers, though. It's supposed to be just plug and play. That's what annoys me. Uh, okay, well, we'll see. Well, and I have to say, too, that the day that it shit the bed, 
was the same day. Okay, you guys. We lost our internet. Well, yeah. you, okay. Now, the day before this, our fucking, we have a sprinkler system. Yeah. And the sprinklers in the front were not working. My front bank wouldn't turn so off. So all our grass was dying. And right. we live in like one of those fucking places with an HOA. They will jump your shit. And they will fine you if your yeah. grass looks like crap. Yeah, they won't so, let you go white trash on this place here. So right. Yeah. You can't have dead grass. It's got to right. look at least so presentable. So I, lo- I called my sprinkler man over here. We call the sprinkler I guy. My sprinkler man. And he broke my fucking internet cable. Yeah, he's like... Yeah. He's out there working, like, fixing the sprinklers. Yeah. And then all of a sudden our internet goes out. And yeah. Tom goes out there and he's like, Hey, my internet just went out. Does that have anything to do with anything you were doing? And he was like, Well, uh, you know... Uh, well, my, I did my, cut this hemming. one cable. Yeah, he was hemming and hawing. He was cutting, he was cutting, well, you know, there's wires that run out to solenoids that trip valves on our fucking little sprinkler banks. I got a fucking sophisticated sprinkler system. And uh, he didn't really fess up to it, but I fucking, I, I let it slide. And I went out and it, because it, it's free to fix. The cable company came and fixed it. It's just that we missed cable for, we didn't have, we didn't have internet I had to go to Starbucks and use their Wi-Fi. But it didn't really shit the bed. I mean, you, you're listening to the microphone now. It's good quality. Yeah. It's just, um. It's, it doesn't recognize it as Blue Yeti. It just says like unidentified microphone. Yeah. And uh, we had to, like, adjust the settings accordingly. Yeah. And, and we're not the only ones that's had this issue with Blue Yeti. You know, it's a good... It's Everybody loves it, podcasters, but... I mean, they... Yeah, this does seem to be... Yeah. And Best Buy sells, like, a fucking shit ton of right. these. Just that when it does that, and I think it has something to do with Mac, it fucks up the settings... So when it comes to recording audio books, I don't trust it because the consistency may not be there. That's what I mean. So we're it's, gonna go ahead and re-record yeah. all the recording she's already done on the audio book with a new microphone we have coming. I mean, yeah. I, I got a pro microphone. Like, coming. like I said, it's a good microphone. It's just I, I don't trust the consistency for, it's for audio fucking, books. It's for fucking podcasters. You know, for for podcasting, it's fine. Yeah, it right. sounds totally fine. Right. But for audio book, they're very um, stringent about their, you know. The sound Settings quality and everything has to, every take has to be consistent. Yeah. It has to sound like it was all done in one take, one take. And I don't trust that to do it when it's forgetting what its settings were. Yeah. Right. So that's why. That's why we're selling it. It's not like it's shitty or anything like right. that. Right. I'm just anal about that shit. I don't want it to be fucked well, up. Well, no, I am too. I'm just saying. I'm sick of those complaints about inconsistency on the audio. So I'm, we're going to get a fucking pro set. We got a pro, pro microphone coming. Yeah. We finally did. And I'll sing into that bitch and I will fucking, the crowds will love it. They will love it. <laughs> Me singing Judas Priest songs and Glenn Danzig and songs. And Danzig. Of course, man. He sings Danzig I, in the shower. Yeah. When my dick's big. <laughs> when it's big? Okay. <laughs> okay. It's always big, huh? Uh, so that's what okay. I mean. It's like that was right. a weird thing to say. <laughs> hey, hey, heart of the devil. See? I'm not, I'm not warmed up. Okay. I got to get my warmed up, man. Uh. I've been drinking too much. Yeah, no shit been you been have. When I get warmed up, I can sing. He can, yeah. Yeah, I can sing. It's, it's fine. <laughs> but I just need to write mic, and I want maybe I'll buy a preamp for that. We'll see We'll see what exactly what I do. I and got, some I got, tequila. To some tequila, and I go into the sound room. We've got a sound booth. and um, We do we have a closet that we converted. I got, I got that bitch totally sound Into a dead room. Into a dead room. Yeah. <laughs> The closet in my office is now a dead room. I want to do my own cover of Dissident Aggressor. I want to do my own cover of Sinner from okay. Judas, Judas Priest. A more modern version of Sinner. 30 years now he's sleeping. You know, yeah, right? Yeah, I know. Okay. I'm going to sing some too, but I haven't decided what I'm going to do yet. Okay. You can do all kinds of songs. He's not He's not buying it. Is that what? <laughs> no, I know, he, she, I know she can sing. She, I asked her to sing one time, and, and she wouldn't do it. She'll sing when she wants to sing, but I heard her sing one time. I was like, man, you sound pretty good. To so do that again? She's going on. She got, all, she got all scared. Yeah, I'm. Yeah. It's it's weird. It's like I. It's weird <sighs> because this is social anxiety, y'all. Yeah. I know I have a decent voice. I mean, I used to sing in uh, a choir. And I was mm-hmm. asked to do solos and stuff, and I was just like, no, because I still have, like, stage fright. All right. So let's talk about our second case of murder in Sweden. This is the murder of Katrine DaCosta. Okay. 
This happened in June of 1984. Now, Katrina Costa was also a prostitute, um, also a heroin addict. She was 28 years old. Now, there was a, you know, a, a small segment of street in Stockholm, Sweden, which is called, and forgive me, I'm sure I'm butchering this, but it's called, <laughs> God, I can't believe I'm going to attempt to pronounce this. The Malmskildnadsgatan? Yeah, come on. Which, you if, if you people are Swedish, then please help me out with that. I see that Swedish shit written, and I'm like, how the hell are you fucking... It's that? so how many syllables. How the hell oh, my you, God. How the hell do you pr pronounce that shit? Yeah. All those so, J's and all those K's. Yeah, well, this... And those little dots over the word. This, like, I can understand the the syllables, like, in small doses, but it's, yeah. it's kind of like German. It's just kind of like they keep adding syllables. It's like, knock it off. It's like, break that shit up. So, yeah, so that's what this, um, and I'm not saying again, and it's honestly, I wrote about this case in Faceless Villain 3, which is coming out this year, and when I was reading the audiobook, I tried to pronounce it, like, a bunch of times, and I was just like, fuck it, and I was just like, I said some other thing, because <laughs> I can't pronounce it, and I said it, and I just kept messing it up so many times. So, this, this area, I think it's only, like, 600 meters, like, just a couple of blocks long. And it's kind of where all, like, all the prostitutes hang out. So she was kind of like a regular there. Now, Katrina DaCosta, she had apparently, she had been married once before. She had a son. Um, I think her husband was Portuguese. Um, and uh, she had a kid. But I guess I, that had not worked out. And so she would, uh, you know, she had fallen on hard times. So she had turned to prostitution. Now, the last time she was seen alive was June 10th of 1984. Now, she was seen getting out of a man's car, which presu presumably was a client. And that was, uh, I believe, the last time that people had seen her alive. So she went missing after that stage. Now, her mom, and again, like we were saying before, like, oh, a lot of these people and they're prostitutes and like their families don't know where they are. But apparently her mother did um, know where she was and like kept track of her movements. So her mother started to get worried about her after a day or two and um, reported her disappearance to the police. Now, uh, no sign of her was spotted until July 18th, which if you're doing any math, that's more than a month later. They found pieces of her in a garbage bag mm -hmm. under an overpass in a place called Solna, which was just north of the city center. That tells me she was killed in an apartment <sighs> or in some kind of secluded place in a bathtub. It right? had to be because she was then, caught up. She, yeah, and that's how he got her out of the apartment. Mm. Probably did it in a bathtub. Yeah. And you put them in that plastic bag and you take them out little by little. See? Are you speaking from experience? or No. Was, uh, <laughs> yeah. I'm just... Let cut up big bodies before, you know, uh, with deer. Well, deer. Not yeah. not people, yeah. not people. No. no. <laughs> no. But, uh, you know, I can reduce an entire deer down to nice fillets and cutlets just within an hour without spilling any blood. So you also did the Atlas Vampire case. Yeah, you went back in though. time to the 1930s before you were even born. It's different, though, when you're doing it to game, you know, a uh, medium-sized game like deer. You're doing it outside. So you witch yeah. them up, you hang them up by their heads from a tree branch. You know what I mean? You're yeah. doing it out in the open. And you got some coolers next to you, you know, and you've already field-dressed them. To get them out of the field after you've shot them, you got to, you know, cut the belly open and yeah. remove all the internal organs. You leave that there for the coyotes and the other things, you know, nothing's wasted. Everything's eaten. Yeah. You know, if I ain't going to eat it, I'm going to let the other animals eat it. Well, yeah, you but, should. Yeah. This is all done with respect, you know what I mean? You don't waste anything, you know. And they're all perfectly culled animals. The ones that have already reproduced and they're towards the end of their life, you know. And they're living in a Garden of Eden that my dad and I created, you know. Because <laughs> when you have hunting rights on the land, you're, you're fucking stocking that land with all the trees and all the food that they like you know what i mean and just let them reproduce out there and just cull off the top yeah that's how they that's how indians did that shit well that's the yeah. best way to do that that's yeah. the sustainable way to do it yeah 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 
So this woman, like I said, and there was some uh, controversy later on over whether her killer had been a butcher or a surgeon, but we'll get into that in a little bit. Yeah. So they found some parts of her body in garbage bags uh, in July of 1984. Now, a couple of weeks after that, in August, they found some more parts of her body in a different set of garbage bags. Although, it should be noted that her head was never found. One breast was never found. Uh, Her genitalia were never found. So, I don't know if her killer kept that shit. I don't know. But they never did find it. Now, she was identified through her fingerprints as Katrine DaCosta, as I said, 28-year-old heroin addict and prostitute. Now, shortly after the body was discovered, the first person that came to the attention of police was a doctor, a pathologist, in fact, by the name of Teet Harm. Hmm. Or Herm? I'm not sure. What does the umlaut of the A mean? I don't know. I don't know. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> it's, it sounds like a weird name, but I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing it right. It might be Herm. I'm not, I don't know. So, he was kind of a guy that, even though he denied it, um, he was kind of a guy that was known in the prostitute community. Like, a lot of people had seen him around there. Yeah, he was a regular. He's he a had player been, and a payer. Right. He had yeah, visited yeah, yeah, many yeah. different prostitutes. Yeah, exactly. Also, interestingly... Um, He worked at a forensics laboratory at the Karolinska Institute, which was immediately in between the location where the first set of bodies had been found, or body parts had been found, and the location where the second set of body parts had been found. So it was right in the middle. So they thought that was a little strange. Also, two years prior to Katrine DaCosta being murdered, Teet Harms wife, Anne Catherine, had died of a quote-unquote suicide. Mm. Now, she had been hanged, but they found her hanging from a rope, like from a bedpost, and she was dressed up as if she was going out that night, which they thought was a little strange. Now, the coroner did rule her death a suicide, But police were always kind of suspicious that maybe he had killed her, but they couldn't prove it. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Um, So she apparently had been attempting to divorce him at the time. So there was kind of a motive. But like I said, there wasn't a lot of physical evidence. Um, They also thought it was very suspicious that when she died, he was a little kind of meh about it, you know? So they thought that was a little weird also. Um, Also, Anne Catherine, that's his wife, um, her father, after Katrine DaCosta was killed, he kind of came to the police and said, you know, I told you guys that I'm pretty sure that T killed Anne Catherine. Now I think maybe he killed this prostitute as well. Maybe you should look into that. So it was actually Anne Catherine's father that brought Teet Harm to the attention of authorities at the time because he thought, hey, I think he killed my daughter and now I think he killed this other person as well. And so he worked at a forensics laboratory. He did. He was a yeah, doctor. Yeah. He was a pathologist. Yeah. yeah. Which kind of makes me think that one back in the 30s was something like that. Guys yeah, that see, into the some body and people that are and... like medical... I'm not shitting on medical students. Like, you know, good for you. But I, there's got to be a small percentage that are getting into it for nefarious it's reasons. It's just like... It's just like the kind of thing where, you know what I mean, a lot of pyromaniacs want to join the damn fire department. It's like that kind of, you got pedoph- pedophiles that want to be teachers. I was just going to say you that. Know, or priests, right, perhaps. Right. <laughs> Somewhere where you will have a lot of contact. Action. They're gonna, it's where they're going to get the Right, action. a lot of contact with the thing that you're into. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Like I said, very small percentage, but I'm sure there's it's a significant percentage. Yeah. So another weird thing about Teat was that his uh, area of expertise was cases of strangulation. He had written several uh, academic papers on the subject of strangulation and how you could tell it apart, uh, you know, from cases where 
it had been a suicide, for example, or where someone had strangled them, like another person had manually strangled them. So he wrote papers about that. Um, the first of these was published two months after his wife was killed, which seems a little strange. I'm just saying. So there was that whole thing. Now, he also had a co-worker who had worked with him like a, a little bit, whose name was Jovan Raz. I guess I'm pronouncing that right. Um, and he at first thought, well, I don't think, I don't really think Teat had anything to do with the death of his wife or the death of this prostitute. But then after he kind of looked into it, he's like, hmm, yeah, I think probably that was who it was. A lot of his co-workers thought he was, not so much that he was a murderer necessarily, but that he was a little creepy, like in a way that you couldn't really put your finger on. You know what I mean? A little creepy. Mm -hmm. um, also, they asked around um, a bunch of other prostitutes that had worked with Katrine da Costa that, you know, kind of, you know, frequented the same area. Um, no less than 50 of them identified Teet Harm. They're like, oh, yeah, he's here all the time. Um, he's a regular with several of the prostitutes, even though his story was, oh, one time I had a fight with my wife and I bought a prostitute one time, just that one time. Yeah. And that was it. But 50 of the prostitutes well, man said, sometimes has a moment of weakness. <laughs> <laughs> That's what, and that's what he said. He said it was one moment of weakness, yeah. but all the prostitutes, like I said, 50 prostitutes said, oh yeah, I know that dude. He's here all the time. One of them even said that he was uh, violent with her, uh, presumably that he had beaten her up. So there was that whole thing. Also, um, they did a search of uh, Teat Harm's home turned up uh, some knives and sheaths, turned up a lot of violent pornography. So um, at this point, since so many people had kind of said, yeah, he was kind of in the area, blah, blah, blah. So he was arrested for the murder of Katrine da Costa. Now, while this was going on, there was also this other guy who was also kind of coming up in the uh, suspect list. Now, this was a fellow who had worked with Teat Harm previously. This was another doctor. He was a GP, and his name was Thomas Algen. Now, similar to, uh, to um, Teat Harm's case, this, Thomas Algen's wife, Christina, was also attempting to divorce him at around this time, and her grounds for divorce were that he was sexually molesting their two-year-old daughter. What? Now, they never found concrete proof of that other than, you know, her say-so uh, and the child say-so. But Christina said, and the little girl said, that she had seen Daddy cutting up a woman's body with another guy. And this other guy, she said, looked kind of like Teat Harm. So on the basis of this testimony, and like I said, she was only two, so... Yeah, how do you have any memory? Take that with it? whatever. Right. But like I said, she, so she was a two-year-old kid. Um, at the time, like I said, at the time she was molested, I don't know how much later this was, but she said that she had seen Daddy cutting up a body with this other guy. So he was arrested also. So both of these guys were put on trial. Now, aside from the testimony of this two-year-old kid that said, yeah, I saw a daddy and this other guy like cutting this body up, there was also this married couple and they owned a photography shop in Stockholm. And they said, okay, well, a while back in the summer of 1984, we developed this set of photographs that appeared to show body parts, like a cut up body. And these two guys came to pick them up. And these two guys kind of looked like Teat Harm and Thomas Algen. Now we asked them about these photos because the people that developed them were like, what the fuck is this? We are very upset about it. And they were like, oh, well, it's this, you know, um, super secret investigation. Please don't say anything about it. I don't know if they said they were cops or anything like that, but I think that's what they were trying to imply. So the people that worked at the photo at the photography shop didn't report it to police at the time because 
these guys said, oh, you know, this is a top secret investigation. You know, we can't let anybody know we're developing these, blah, blah, blah. So they're like, okay, fair enough. Um, but later on, when they came to trial, they came forward and said, yeah, we thought that was pretty weird. Now, the trial goes on. These two doctors were actually going to be, I mean, the jury came back with a guilty verdict. And then apparently, I'm not sure how the law entirely works or, you know, even now or like worked at that time, but they said, okay, well, the judge has to finalize it. But before that happened, apparently a couple of the jurors gave interviews to the media, which was not allowed because the final verdict had not been put in. So the whole thing was ruled a mistrial because there had been, you know, shenanigans. Like the yeah. jurors had been like, yeah, we're going to talk to the press before the jury was, uh, before the uh, verdict was finalized. So they basically threw the case out. But because that happened, there was a huge public outcry because everybody at this point, they had pretty much been, you know, in the public, in the media. They had pretty much been, well, these guys are guilty of cutting up this poor prostitute. So we have to put them back on trial because that's crazy. We can't just let them go. So all of the media attention, everything like that, init um, eventually they did put them back on trial. Now, at the second trial, they were actually acquitted although here's well the argument they made was that well because they never found the woman's head and they never found some of the body parts they're like well we couldn't conclusively prove yeah that, that was her that it well yeah. no they knew it was her because okay. of the fingerprints but they said we couldn't conclusively prove the cause of death okay because they never found like some of the body parts so they're like, we're presuming that it's murder, but we can't prove that. Yeah, they're saying it might have been a natural causes. Right. And then it's so, something disposed of the body improperly. Right. Right. So all th so they were saying, the judge said, all we can convict them of, they're like, we're pretty sure, though, a, th that they did cut up the body. Whether they killed right. her or not, we can't prove that. I get it. I get it. What they're saying is, is it could have been that they were all fucking out getting high. Mm. And then that she died from an OD. That's what I mean. And that they cut her up and got rid of her because they were afraid that they would somehow get in trouble for the OD. That's That defense has been used quite yeah, a bit, actually. Yeah, that's what I mean. It sounds fucked up. Right, but when you I mean, look at it from that kind of way, you yeah. say, well, yeah. Okay. I mean, you would think that, you know, yes, the person that cut up the body was obviously the person that killed the person, but those are two different things. Like, if you can't yeah. prove the murder... Right. There was one of those DuPont heirs, rich motherfucker, on one of his own private compounds shot and killed a private trainer of his yeah that he got acquitted he yeah. said he said well yeah it was in self-defense even though i think and i think if i remember correctly he disposed tried to dispose of that body in a very similar way yeah i think so but he got off yeah he got off of it well like i when said you I have money of course it helps well you, yeah, of course. If you come from a family, helps. That's, if, yeah. if, if you come from a fucking powerful family, then yeah, you can get away with you pretty away, much yeah. anything if you have like millions of dollars. Now, if that's just me saying, "Well, it was self-defense," I shot the guy. You know, it's self-defense, and I was cutting the body up because I was afraid no one would believe me. Man, I'd fucking get life in prison for that shit. Uh, as yeah. would I. Right, yeah. Well, and I've written about a couple of cases like that where mm. people did, like, just get off just because they couldn't quite prove. Right. Because it's like, oh, well, they died accidentally, and then I was afraid I'd get in trouble, so right. I buried them. Right. You know what I mean? Not cutting up. That's right. a, That's something else. But so at this particular trial, they're like, okay, well, we couldn't actually prove that they killed her because like I said, they could not determine cause of death because they didn't find her entire body. They only found pieces in bags. They're like, now the judge said, I'm pretty sure. I mean, I believe that they did cut the body up, but that's only desecration of a corpse, which isn't a huge deal. Um, and by the time it came to trial, if it was just desecration of a corpse, the statute of limitations on that had run out. Yeah. So they're like, there's really nothing we can do about it. We have to let them go. So the two guys got acquitted. Now, 
the media flipped out because they thought these two guys had killed this woman and they got away with it. Um, so there was like a huge outcry. Um, they actually were not successful in getting another, uh, like a third trial. However, they were successful in getting both of their medical, uh, licenses revoked. And that was in 1991. Um, and as far as I know, they never got their licenses back. Hmm. So they couldn't practice, uh, you do, do medical practice Sweden anymore got a lot after of that. Weird, Sweden's got a lot, of, a lot of weird cases behind it. There were some other ones maybe we ought to do one of these days. They had a... They had a bunch of Swedish black metal bands that were going around committing murder. Somebody just other. asked us to do and a show about burn, that. Were they? Yeah, that's a good. Like that a might be a good ago, topic. Somebody, that yeah. might be a good topic. We that's what I said. Burning down churches and killing motherfuckers. These yep. damn Swedish black metal bands. Somebody seriously, it's yeah. funny that you mentioned that because I don't even think I told you that. But no, yeah, I didn't like. Know. But I know about that. Less than a week ago, somebody sent me a message We're saying do a show we should on do a show about that. We'll do a show on that. I'm going to have to write that on my list because, yeah, yeah we'll that is a, a good that. idea. Yeah. So even though these You guys two... like Mortis? Go look up Mortis. <laughs> I think it was through two eyes. It's kind of like a We black should metal see, guy. too, because... Dresses it, up like, like a fucking evil elf, evil dro- evil. Dro- it dro- might be still... I don't yeah. remember if it's on Shudder or Netflix. Um, yeah. It's a documentary called Until the Light Takes Us. Yeah. Um, and it's about that. Okay, yeah, I had to see that one. So, I can't remember. I know I saw it on one of those two services, so I'm pretty yeah. sure it's still there. But we'll have to check know, that out. Sweden's like a fucking chilled out, fucking mellow ass, fucking almost like a hippie country. You know, they've had problems recently with all the shits going on now, but that's a fucking hippie country. But there were these black metal fucking rock stars going around with Satanism and Odinism and all that kind of shit, burning down the churches. Well, they thought it was too boring each other there, so they thought they fucking would spice boring, it yeah. up. Yeah. I guess. I'd be down with those dudes if I was fucking hanging out back in those days. But, <laughs> like, yeah, burn, yeah, okay, burn that shit down, man. I can bo- see you doing boring it. Boring ass Sweden. Burn that shit down. I can see you doing it. they send you to jail, it's only going to be for like a couple months. He was a metal guy in the in the bit, back in the day. Yeah, in when case I was, you guys I was really Before I... Before metal... Before you discovered God. Yeah, it was what happened was fucking Bon Jovi came out and I said, oh, I see how this shit's going. And I, I left the, I left the metal scene. Because metal started to become about power ballads and female fans. I saw it coming. Nobody likes girls. Come on. Well, when you're fucking 14, you know what I mean? You don't want to fucking... 15, you don't want to listen to the same music that the girls would listen to. But then like a couple years later, I don't know how it happened. I'm listening to Duran Duran and fucking... <laughs> Well, that's the thing. When I was 14 or 15, I was listening to Duran Duran, but also I was yeah. listening to Alien Sex Fiend and... Yeah, it's just that... And the UK subs. <laughs> there, There is good metal. Good, I did not like Bon Jovi. Good metal still bon exists. Either. I mean, you have these fucking motherfuckers with cookie monster voices and shit, you know what I mean? That shit only it, it, shit gets old. There, there, there was some really good metal bands, and there probably are some still some good metal bands. But metal... Metal lost its luster over time. I appreciate it more now that I'm older. Like, when I was growing up, I feel like, especially when I was in junior high or middle school for you younger folks, uh, which used to be called junior high, um, I feel like it was kind of like the metal heads versus the new wave and post-punk kids. Yeah, that's kind of the way it was. I defected yeah. eventually, though. Because, I mean, I had friends in both camps, yeah. <clears throat> but I do feel like the metalhead people were always uh, picking on and or beating up members of my friend group. See, what ended up happening is, is that metal started to go too much L.A., too much hair metal, butt uh, rock, yeah, too much fucking power ballads, very female-oriented. I liked British metal. I yeah. liked early... Well, it was uh, more working class. Yeah. It was more... It was more like punk in that yeah, way. Yeah, yeah. I, I liked I, I liked like the first five albums from fucking Iron Maiden. Yeah. I it liked, was it, w- it wasn't about pretense. Right. It wasn't about image 70, or seventies right. and eighties Judas Priest. Yeah. Uh, I liked fucking Merciful Fate. I liked fucking some of the King Diamond, Venom, Slayer were good. Early uh Metallica. Uh, fuck no, fuck it. Black Sabbath. Who doesn't yeah. love black? Oh yeah, black. Who Sabbath doesn't was, love black? Sabbath? Black Sabbath they're like Motorhead. Right, I think yeah. they're like Motorhead. universally 
Yeah, you let me in Motorhead. Everybody though, loves Motorhead. Motorhead was kind of like a very heavy blues in a certain way. But yeah. yeah fuck a, Who doesn't like Motorhead? Especially like the fucking Another Perfect Day album. Fucking Bomber. Fucking Ace of Spades album. Overkill. That album was fucking yeah. really good. I kinda, the very first one from Motorhead with Vibrator and all that kind of shit. I kind of feel Horse. like Motorhead is one yeah. of those bands like... It's kind of like Bowie. Like, if you yeah. don't like Motorhead or if yeah. you don't like Bowie, I don't, like, what's the matter with uh, you? <laughs> early Deep Purple. Deep Purple was fucking really good for a while. Uh, and then I'm going to go into prog rock, even some Pink Floyd. I mean, uh, unfortunately, I like some Pink I like Floyd, Pink Floyd. But, you know, it was prog rock, you know what I mean? And prog that's rock was right. very pretentious and shit. You know I know, I mean? but that's... It wasn't so much into fucking the Alan Parsons Project and all that bullshit. Some of that's but, all right, though. But then eventually it gets to the point to where those motherfuckers are focusing in too much on guitar solos. And then all of a sudden, that Sisters of Mercy first, last, and always album kicked in with no guitar, Didn't no you, guitar solos. Now, does, doesn't the legend go the that thing. you found that I found in a garbage my, can? There you go. That's the legend. Tell him, Jenny. Legend he has goes. He told me this. I was, ha- I was hanging he out. He was a my, metal guy. And he guy. found a Sisters of Mercy album. In a trash. In the trash. Sticking up out of there like that. Who threw that away? I don't if know. you're listening right now, let us know who you I was, are. I was living I'm in, just curious I was in as Trenton, to what you're... Michigan. I was in Trenton, Michigan. It was, I just I got back from story. Brazil, although I was going to return to Brazil for high school, too. It was in high school at the time. I had lived a very complicated life because I had international type you parents. You are very that complicated. Were moving around all the time. And me and my buddy Mike were walking, were smoking cigarettes and shit. I was probably about. 10th grade, 11th grade. I think it was 10th grade. I was in, I did the 11th grade twice because they didn't accept my credits and shit. So I had to, I was in high school for like five years. <laughs> uh, but it was fun though. I liked high school. Anyway, I was walking and I saw fucking a black album with a fucking white star and a face yeah. sticking up out of it. It was... Um, <sighs> Here's the deal. I always... It looked like, I don't remember what album it was. It's been so long. It was not a full-size album. It was actually a EP. It was an EP. Yeah. It only had like four or five songs on it. Yeah, yeah. And fucking, we listened to it and fucking, I loved it. And then I went down to the record store and bought, bought First, Last, and Always. But it was sticking. Which to me it was is snowing like. snowing outside and it was sticking yeah. out of the top of the fucking garbage can. And it was in, 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 in Trenton, Michigan. I have to say, as as varied and, um, you know, kind of wide-ranging as the goth subculture yeah. is, uh, which you would know if you were involved in it, as we have been for many years, Sisters of Mercy's first and last and always, to me, if anybody says, what is goth or what is goth rock? Per- that album right there, first and last That's and I'm like, start with yeah. that. Because yeah. that, to me, is like yeah. the quintessential. Yeah. Oh, I remember what was on that album that had Alice on it. Yeah, it had it was a, it was an EP with Alice, and yeah, I yeah. think something else was on it, but it's been so long. And, still a great song. Yeah, That's and still a great song. The album was fucking. The album cover was damaged because it was outside. Somebody threw it in the garbage. Somebody threw it in the garbage. <laughs> there was, was like fuck Sisters of Mercy. Well, God I think it. they got it for free because there were other albums with it, and they they were oh, all okay. they were all albums that sucked. Oh, okay, except so, for that one. Except that one. <laughs> but we just saw that. We go look at that. It had a cool album cover. That looks like some metal shit. Yeah, we'll yeah. take that. Yeah, the rest of it was all bullshit. <laughs> took that back and listened to that. Now one. I'm kind of Whoa. curious as to what the rest of it was. It was, like I'm saying, it was like shit like fucking... Uh, okay, I'm trying to remember. Now you're making me fucking rack my brains. It was shit Sorry. that at that time that I didn't like, but I'd probably like it. And that was shit like Steely Dan, which I like Steely Dan. But what? I love stuff, Steely Dan. And it was stuff like Uriah Heep. And stuff no, like that's good. and stuff like UFO and yeah. then stuff like uh, uh, what else? Man, free music stuff that was yeah, it was stuff like that. But I didn't like it at that time. But somebody had I saw that black Lame. album with the fucking white face yeah. and, the, and the and the white star, and it's and uh, I said it was, was it? and then we just I just took it. I said we'll see what this sounds like. Went back to my buddy Mike's place and we put and that you on. Never and I was went like, back. What the fuck? Yeah, I was like, what the <gasps> fuck? Yeah, yeah. Like I said, first and last out. Like to me, that that kind of like condenses everything down. Like I know a lot of people say Bauhaus, which I love Bauhaus, but their sound was much more idiosyncratic. Uh, yeah. They had a lot of reggae influence. They had yeah. a lot of funk influence. They had a lot of other influences. If you want something that sounds like 
goth rock. First and last. And Sisters of Mercy, first and last and always. That is, that that, album right it's like the distillation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of like that's like the template right. going forward. That one and like and everybody ripped that shit that off one into and, the nineties. <laughs> that one and, and the Cure's album called Pornography. Pornography. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that album. Nineteen eighty two. Yep. That's it. Yeah, those two albums. Yeah. Honestly, Pornography reminds me of. And that was an evil. That's probably album. like my favorite Cure album. Yeah. I have to say. Yeah. Um, it reminds years. me of like taking the Greyhound. To Atlanta to go to the first Lollapalooza. Yeah. <laughs> because I listened to it and I lost my Walkman on that journey and I still remember that shit yeah. nowadays. But I was listening to that and Joy Division Closer was on the other side of the cassette. Yeah, Joy Division's Closer we also got <laughs> you the fuck out and also fucking um, uh, Bauhaus. Um, what's the one that has fucking um, Double Dare on it and all that? Um, well, In the Flat Field had that on yeah, it. Yeah. That the, was their in, first album. Yeah, in the Flat Field. Yeah, that one. Maybe Mask. Mask, Mask is actually my favorite Bauhaus Mask album. probably would And be. like I said, it's all over the map. There's reggae on it. There's, yeah. you know, kind well, of goth de- rock it's stuff. It's demented on. reggae. It's, uh, yeah, it's like all over the place, but still it hangs together. Yeah. I think that's easily their best album. Even though it's like it's like they're most diverse, but that's why I said that I don't consider them a quintessentially goth rock band because they had so much other shit going on. All four of them had wildly divergent music tastes, and you yeah. can tell that if you listen to them because it's just like kind of all over the place. Well, if you just want to lay back and have sex, of course you put fucking you Billy Idol, fucking Rebel Yell. I fucking is love that it. really sex music, though? I think so. <laughs> if cocaine is involved, if cocaine is involved, then that would be Rebel Yell. Okay. Yeah. yeah All right. right. Yeah. <laughs> maybe al- maybe alcohol. Uh, there's something about that album. I've always loved that album. It is good. Yeah. I listened to it recently, and I was like, "Boy, this is a, this is awful simplistic." The way it was recorded. That's all right, though. But that's just the way it was back in the eighties. I yeah. found that, like, I've well, here's the thing. Like, I know we're getting off on, but yeah. It's after midnight. Are you feeling all right? Oh yeah. Face <laughs> to face and back to back. Seriously, I what feel it... <laughs> easy and feel my sex attack. Sing it. Flesh. Sex attack. I love that shit. Flesh for fantasy. Sex attack. We cry. <laughs> you guys, we have a well. We haven't been for a, uh, a while, but yeah. we we would always go to the eighties night at Independent Bar yeah. here in down, downtown Orlando. Which, yeah. if you're around here, you should go because I love that place. But yeah. um, we would, uh, yeah, we always dance to Billy Idol. <laughs> it's uh, it, I love eighties music. I love. Honestly, and I feel like I had a lot of like eclectic music taste when I was a ki- like younger. Like I you like talk about the chameleons. I like '60s music. I like I like old blues, like from the yeah. '20s, '30s, '40s. Um, I like rockabilly from the '50s. I love that. Ca- I love that shit. I love Elvis. I love all that shit. Yeah. And um, but as I've gotten older, I feel like I've gotten like more appreciation for. Shit I didn't like so much growing up. Yeah, I feel yeah, like yeah. I can appreciate it more. Yeah, looking back on it, it's a lot better than it was. Yeah. Yeah. I think time, like, kind of gives you... Like, seriously, we... Because we go to movies all the time. Yeah. And I've seen... I'm super excited. Isn't this funny? I'm super excited about seeing Rocket Man, the Elton yeah. John biopic. Yeah. And every time I see the trailer, which is a lot because they show it all yeah. the time, I'm like, every time I see this trailer, and I whispered this to him the other day... I'm like, every time I see this trailer, I'm reminded how fucking rad Tiny Dancer is. Yeah, well... Isn't that a rad song? I love that fucking um, song. Elton John was actually a super... And I didn't like him at the time, but... Looking back on it, he yeah. was a fantastic performer and the music was really good. Although I have to say, really even good. in the 80s, yeah. when I'm Still Standing came out, we see I was we were all associating that, that with our parents' generation, right? You know yeah, I, mean? I think so that's what it was. It was. It so was we were trying to like separate ourselves. It's like, right. oh, that's old people, that's music. old people music. Like I like all the new wave. Like I like I, I like Adam yeah. Ant. I like Susan the yeah. Banshees. I like that right. kind of shit. Okay, so getting back to Teat Harm and Thomas Algen, the two guys that were accused of murdering Katrina Da Costa, um, they got off. Uh, in the end, and even though uh, about probably half of the Swedish population think that they probably did it and got away with it, 
Um, I'm not sure where I stand on it. Like I said, I wrote about this uh, for Faceless Villain 3. And it does sound like, I don't know if they had motivation, but they for sure, um, you know, kind of lied about, particularly Teat, he kind of lied about, oh, I never go to prostitutes. Well, one time I went there, but then all the other prostitutes, like 50 prostitutes, like I said, like recognized him. So I thought that was a little weird. Now, however, I should say that Teat Harm did actually attempt suicide in 1985. And I think he tried to hang himself or strangle himself or something, but he lost like most of his hearing uh, during his suicide attempt. And he has up until now, or at least up until the late 2000s, I don't know if he's still alive or not, um, has maintained his innocence. So I'm not sure how that goes. Now, there was another guy that was possibly a suspect that does sound kind of intriguing. Now, this was a guy, he was originally from Poland, and he was a butcher, which, you know, that might have been kind of uh, relevant to the way the body was cut up. His name was Stanislav Gnurka. Now, he had been in a mental institution since 1974. Now, he was in there because the crime he was put in there for was he strangled a woman and then cut her body up and put the parts in garbage bags. Well, this sounds which, like a good suspect. Like yeah. I said, that sounds a little familiar. Now, police did look into him, but for whatever reason, um, I'm not entirely sure why, they dismissed him as a suspect. I don't know if it, it was because they couldn't prove he was there at the time or Timing, for some maybe. other reason. Yeah, maybe he was someplace else or maybe he was incarcerated. I don't know. But so they dismissed him as a suspect, even though that M.O. sounds pretty similar. You know, hey... I'm just going to cut up this woman and put her in garbage yeah. bags, just like this guy did. But so that was another guy that it could have been. So maybe it wasn't these two doctors, but because of the kind of, you know, media circus that surrounded these two guys, like in the ensuing years after the crime, like I said, this uh, first time in 1984, that was kind of what inspired Stieg Larson to write uh, Girl with a Dragon Tattoo, where he was kind of coming from an, from a perspective of there's these powerful men and they're kind of preying on these women and no one's really doing anything about it because that's kind of how it seemed at the time. So that's where that idea came from. Whether these two doctors actually did this or not, I don't really know. And I'm like I said, I'm not taking a stand on that because maybe they didn't do it. They did seem like they had some other sketchy shit going on, but... You know, I don't know if they actually killed and cut up this woman or not. It actually kind of, to me, sounds more likely that the second dude did it that was like a butcher. But I don't know. I wasn't there. So I don't really know. Now, mm. this uh, Polish guy, too, the butcher, they also did find his uh, name in Katrine's diary, uh, along with other names of her clients and whatnot. So he had actually been there. Some of the other prostitutes recognized him. Yeah, he came around here sometimes. Um, they did find his hair, um, I believe, on maybe on her body, but it that's the kind of thing, though. He was kind of a regular customer, it seemed like, at least according to her diary. So, so he probably had many bitches hair on his That's what I mean. Right. right. So right. It, it could be argued that, right. you know, that was just, like I said, you can't really prove that. It's hard to tell with this shit, with all those transient people and all these prostitutes. Yeah. All these people coming and going. So I Having think sex with each other, these fucking nasty people. <laughs> 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 right? It's just yeah. like, a, a, you know, it's if you have to do that for money, it's like, fuck, man. I don't, yeah. I don't think I could do that. You get sick of it real quick. Well, I'm already sick of it, and I haven't even done it. You are sick of money, or are you sick of sick of sex? No, I'm saying I wouldn't. You, you sick of sex already? No, I'm no, no. Smack you. No, what? It, no, what I'm saying <laughs> is that even the thought yeah. of having to like, oh, yeah. I have no oh, money, I have to say and I have yeah, to like course. blow dudes for money. Yeah. I'm already sick of that you idea. Gotta do shit that that's what you I don't mean. want to do to fucking you know. I think I'd rather money. starve. Yeah. Well, Honestly, starving so, sounds yeah. nicer. Than so like blowing was, some stranger. It was like that. That, <laughs> that was like that movie we saw the other day. Fucking the hustle. 
Where yeah, that we woman just said, well, if you're good looking, then all that allows you to do is that, what is it? You basically have to trade sex for money. Yeah. You know, but if you're, but if you're a, what is it? A, a, if you're a con woman, you can just run rough You can just get it without right, yeah, having you, to do that. Right, yeah. Yeah, because that's, you know, spoiler alert, that's what she was doing in that movie. She was That just, was a funny movie. It was very funny. Yeah. She was just she was just kind of like getting people to like getting rich dudes to like propose to her. Yeah, and steal without rings. having to put out, but then she would like do weird shit and they'd just be like, No, forget it, keep yeah, the ring call, bye. Calling the wedding off and she's keeping the ring every time. And Which, these are like I was huge like, shit, rocks. that's a good scam. It's like half a million dollar mm. wedding rings. I'm like, know, I could do all kind ring. of crazy shit to run yeah. dudes off. Yeah. If I needed to. I would rather do that. Yeah. I'd rather do some like con <laughs> artist shit. <laughs> Then like, no, seriously. It's like, honestly, mad respect to women that are like prostitutes or escorts or something. I could not fucking do that. No way. Like I some think, fucking well, dude think, shows think, up and it's like, yeah, I have to blow this dude? Ew. Oh. Well, they're doing, oh. it, they're doing it because they have to. That's what I mean. And it's like, that's once horrible. Once they start making the money, they start buying the body mods to make more and more money. All these porn stars are also hookers. Yeah. The fucking the porn movies is the fucking demo for the I just, fucking I don't have service. I don't have the mindset for that yeah. kind of stuff. Right. And plus, I don't have a really good because here's the thing, this my face right here, mm. it's like it pretty much conveys every emotion that's like going through my head at the time. Gotta be an so, actress. <laughs> that's what I mean. So like, if I think that you're gross or whatever, yeah. that's totally gonna show. It's like, yeah, it's super awesome. Yay, look at that. Awesome dick that you have. Well, they got my, my face is going, ew. Ching. <laughs> they got some women that just care about your ching. I, just, I can't. I can't. And what's funny I'm not is a that, good actress. I'm not. And then and then these same women got boyfriends. And then the boyfriends tell them to fucking, you know, how much did you make tonight, honey? That's some fucking weird shit. But, you know, it's just the way it is. I always thought that was kind of weird, too. It's, I mean, it's not weird. I don't know. It's weird shit. It is kind of weird. I would, I would find it weird. Well, when we were at fucking Southern Nights... With that fucking weird scene that was going on there, a yeah, lot of that those, was a weird scene. A you lot guys. of those. It's a, fe- it, it's fetish a gay night. bar, but they had like a fetish, fetish night. nights, and they, they have some that we used to go. To. There are some famous porn stars there. Yes. That, okay. And we're not going to mention. We're not going to mention their names, but we. Yeah. But we, we know, know the deal. We know the deal with them. You know, friends with them. I guess you could say. I haven't yeah. seen them in a while, but friends. They're nice with girls. Them. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, really nice girls. But it's funny what they do and how they make money, and then. When you look at the boyfriend, you go like, that's the boyfriend? Yeah. Him? Well, the two of them had one boyfriend that yeah, they yeah, shared. Yeah. Right. And, um... Yeah, if they yeah. all started fighting with each other, though, that's not a thing anymore. Yeah, that well, it was a thing for a these while, were, but these were These were big... The situation titty, kind these, of disintegrated. These were big titty fetish girls. I mean, they're fucking... Yeah, titty, like... Titties the size of beach balls. Yeah, like freakish, yeah. like freakishly They're large. both cool, though. They, yeah, but yeah. like I said, yeah. super nice. I mean, super, super sweet girls. You can go on Poor Hub and see all that shit, and you see some of these bitches with these fucking beach ball sized titties. It, it's probably who, who it is we're talking about. Yeah, and like yeah. I said, that's why I would never shit on people that do that yeah. because there are people like anybody we know. Else. Super, yeah, we know some people that do that. Yeah, and they are super, super nice people. Yeah, you never know they're dorky, and you would they're never no, know. You never know. Well, it's like they're totally normal. If you could just see totally... the face and not the body, you you go like. You're a fucking porn star? Really? Yeah. Okay. But yeah, they're super cool. You yeah. can talk to them about all this kind of stuff. Yeah. And like later on, you find out it's like, oh yeah, I do like, you know, webcam porn and like I do this, that, and the other. And I'm just yeah, like, yeah, and there oh, was okay. more. Yeah. Yeah. So there's like all this shit going on. So like I said, I'm, yeah. I've always been like very laid back. It's like people can do whatever as long as they're not hurting people. I don't really yeah. care. But it's like, some it's girls, interesting, particularly being, like, coming as we do, like, from the goth scene, the fetish scene, and stuff like that. People yeah. are up to all kind of shit, and you don't know about it. Yeah. And even, like, when they tell you afterwards, you're just like, oh, okay. Yeah. You never would have... But you just roll with it. You just roll with it. That's that's how that shit rolls. Is this, and is this and case, like I said, most of them are very nice. Is this case wrapped up? It is, yeah. But okay. like I said, that's I got, pretty much I, where I this... I got curry warming up, man. Wrap this oh, shit up. Oh, you're warming up the eat. curry? Yeah, yeah. okay. Yeah. Look at him. I told you he's Look a very good it. cook. He made curry today. Yeah, man. All right. So we're wrapping up this case, even though I'm sure we probably didn't talk about it, except for maybe 80% of the time we talked about the murders. This show's got to be two hours long. It probably is, isn't right. it? 
Yeah, probably. Yeah. All right. So we're going to wrap up episode 143 about murder in Sweden, Atlas Vampire, and the Katrine da Costa case. Hope you guys enjoyed it, even though we went off on several different drunken tangents, as we usually <laughs> do. But apparently, like I said, you guys like that. Other than the one or two people that are like, when do you guys get to the topic? Yeah. That I always like to leave. You can go to eBay and find you can go to eBay. <laughs> you can go to Wikipedia and find these topics. We're delivering this in a very fucking special way. Because you guys are commuting or you're That's in bed I mean. with headphones on and you're taking your time and we're talking. It's like professional friends. We're just talking to you guys. We're, talking. we're just talking. Yeah. Sometimes we go off on tangents. Yeah. That's just how it happens. Yeah. If you just want the facts, like I said, go read the shit on go Wikipedia, to Wikipedia. And quit right. complaining to me because yeah. I'm kind of sick. We're of talking hearing. your asses to sleep or talking you through your work day. And we know what's going on. You guys are communicating with us. Yeah. It's like AMSR. Wait, what is that? That's that shit where they're fucking rubbing on their fucking microphone and talking to your ears and. Oh chatting. right, right, right. Okay. It's, yeah, it's like a paranormal AMSR kind of deal, but it's different. They got time. They want need people talking to them. Okay. Yeah, making them laugh. That's what I mean. I don't mind yeah, talking to people. Laugh. Even though I I hope I'm talking without like yeah. mispronouncing shit. Yeah. Because, you know. The case is only part of the show. <laughs> <laughs> I'm hungry though. <laughs> Oh dear! Um, oh, he gets like this every time he. And don't forget! Like, don't forget all these microphones that we're selling. If if, if we got any podcasters out there, yeah. If you guys I want, mean, we, we got have friends to... that fucking run podcasts. We got even like, for all we know, Conspiranormal might need some new microphones. Yeah, if you want a blue. Right. Uh, Blue Yeti. We, we have two, two of, of those, them, and we got or we have these. this other, uh, this fifty dollar one that I yeah, can't we'll remember what brand it is. Yeah, we'll give that cheap. Yeah. But yeah, you can have that cheap. So we'll if you want you. one, just like contact us, and yeah. we will. Like I said, if I don't yeah, sell them, I'll just put them on eBay yeah, or whatever. Yeah, they, they're working, and it came from, of course, good homes. They're not abused. This isn't some nasty ass place with dog hair and fucking stinky <laughs> shit everywhere. Just cat hair. <laughs> yeah, not even. <laughs> I vacuum that shit up. <laughs> fucking um, no, it's just. Uh, Regular good stuff is sitting here. It's ready to be used by somebody. It's just that it was... We need a microphone that can podcast and do audiobook. And the, I wouldn't recommend any of these microphones for audiobook. Podcast, they're okay. They're good well, and like I said, I'm not sure they're entirely Mac compatible. Is, I uh, think, well, some of the problem. If you're going to use the Blue Yeti with a Mac, you got to do manual adjustments. To make sure the sound quality is And good. I don't have time for that yeah, shit. Yeah, she didn't have time for that shit. I just don't. Right. <laughs> All right. So we are wrapping up uh, uh, episode 143 about Atlas Vampire and the Katrina Costa case. Hope you guys enjoyed our tangent-filled excursion into the true crime, you know, whatever it was. And remember, if you like the show, like, share, subscribe on all your social media. If you'd like to financially support the show, you can go to our Patreon page, patreon.com slash 13 o'clock podcast, or you can go to our blog, 13 o'clock podcast.wordpress.com. And there's a little button in the sidebar to a PayPal account. If you'd like to give a one-time donation, that would be much appreciated. Remember our last movie review was 12 Monkeys by Terry Gilliam. So go check that out. Also, our regular episodes go up every Tuesday, and our movie retrospectives go up every Friday, 13 o'clock matinee, three new movies in the theater. That comes out every Sunday. If you are a patron, you will get access to all of these the day before they come out, so you'll be all special and shit, so go check that shit shit out. And that'll do it for this episode. We will see you next time. Bye.